Okay, everyone, so for the first day of our class, Social Media for Business, Part 1, um, our syllabus, I mentioned in there that we're, that we're going to be talking about four networks. And the one we're going to talk about today is Twitter. We're going to talk about them in this order. Uh, Twitter has been around since about 2006 and is an indispensable social network. It's an indispensable channel to reach an audience. Um, Let's open a web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here, so open whichever one you like. <coughs> and let's go to twitter.com slash mashable. Twitter.com slash mashable. We're going to the Twitter website and we're going to specifically look at a particular profile, a particular company on Twitter, Mashable. If you haven't heard of Mashable before, this is a great online presence to follow along with because it's about technology and social media and all of that good stuff. <coughs> Mashable, they have a website, Mashable.com. But they also have a Twitter, and a Facebook, and a Google+, and Pinterest, and Instagram. They're on all the social networks, in addition to their main website. On my main website, let's say I'm going to sell products online. Uh, on my website, I have a shopping cart. But I'm still going to set up a Twitter, or a Facebook, or something like that, because I want to get traffic. If I build a great looking website, fully functional, that's no guarantee that I'll get traffic. <coughs> I won't get traffic just with a great website. I need to invest time and effort into SEO, search engine optimization. Part of SEO is being on social media, getting traffic from social media. So we're looking at Mashable's Twitter account. It's got some branding at the top, a graphic. It's got another logo at the left, a little bit of biographical info at the left when they joined, so forth. Um, near the top, you see tweets, following followers, etc. Since they've created their profile, they have um, tweeted 182,000 times, 182 little tweets. They are following 2,800 other people, other accounts on Twitter and they have 6.79 million followers. So these concepts of following and followers, we see them over and over in all of the networks. Mashable, whoever runs Mashable, whoever owns Mashable, has followed on Twitter 2,800 other accounts. We'll see what that means and why in detail a little later. But the bigger number to pay attention to at the moment, and for, for most of you, will be your followers. You're on Twitter, you have an account on Twitter, and so do you know, 320 million other people. And how many people on Twitter follow you, follow your Twitter account? That's your followers. And they've got 6.79 million followers. <coughs> now, for regular people, the, fo the meaning of followers is one thing. But for businesses, the meaning of followers is another. In simply that I mean that you want more followers because that's more of an audience. For regular people, it's a great ego boost that a thousand people follow me on Twitter. But for a business, a thousand people could potentially mean a thousand customers. Now I'm going to use a lot of hedge words as the class goes on, such as potential and possibly and probably and such. None of this is none of this is guaranteed. But they've got 6.79 million followers. If only every one of those people would send them one dollar a month, they'd, keep, they'd be raking in six million dollars a month, if only. But it's very hard to give away money, especially even one dollar. So think about it for yourself. I've got a hundred followers on Twitter. If only I could get those 100 followers to give me one dollar a month, I'd be getting an extra hundred dollars of income a month. But it's very easy for a person to click the follow button but it's much harder for them to click the donate button, the buy button, the call me now button, that kind of call to action button. Follow is easy. But actually doing something meaningful, because people ask, when my company tries to land a client and we say, you're going to need Twitter, you're going to need Facebook, 
they say, well, what? who cares about likes and why, why, why do I have so many followers? What does that even matter? Well, the more followers you have, the more of a potential audience you have that the 1% of them will actually follow through. And that's a very good goal. It's a very conservative estimate, but that's a very good goal. 1% of your followers are the ones that are really going to follow through. If I've got 100 followers, what's 1% of 100? One. One person is really going to follow through and click buy. Now, that's, again, a very conservative estimate. Maybe you're amazing online, and maybe you have an amazing product, and for you it's closer to 50%. So still, out of 100 followers, it's only 50 followers. So really think about it in terms of 1% of followers. So that's why for a business, getting lots of followers is very important. It's not a popularity contest. It's not an ego boost. It's a potential audience to accomplish your goal. Make a sale, get someone to call you, um, donate to your nonprofit, whatever. If we do the math, 1% of 6 million is what, 600,000 or something? So potentially that's still a lot of people that could actually follow through and do their what they're trying to accomplish online. And if I'm a business and I've got 6 million followers, I'm doing well because the 1% could sustain my business. If I've got 1,000 followers, 1% 1 of that is 100? I'm not a math major. So uh, 100 people. Uh, is that enough to build a business on? And um, what you see on everyone's Twitter account are tweets. Tweets are 140 characters long. Characters, not words. Characters. 140 characters, which means letters and numbers and symbols, like dots and exclamation points and question marks. Emoji, those cute little icons that everyone's using nowadays to share their feelings. All those little icons, all of that adds up to 140 characters. But you can also add, not only text, but you can also add pictures to a tweet. Video to a tweet, audio to a tweet. Question. Do spaces count? Yes, even empty, quote unquote, empty spaces count. So, one, two, three, four. So yeah, everything counts. What about the pictures? The pictures also count. When you attach a picture, we'll see that it will eat up your limitation as well. So if I add a picture, suddenly I think it's about twenty. Suddenly, I have 20 less characters. Um, video also takes about 20 characters. But you have 140 characters to get your message across. And you can add multimedia, which are pictures, sounds, video. But they do eat up your, your limitations. But notice that's still very powerful because I'm scrolling around and I'm looking and maybe I didn't even notice this one because it's just boring text but then I looked at this one and I saw a picture and it stood out and I'm looking around and I saw this picture and it stood out and then I saw this picture I mean this tweet and I didn't really notice it it's just text then I saw this picture or this picture or this video and such so nowadays really and it's kind of obvious but uh, I'll say it because uh, a lot of conventional wisdom is not quite obvious sometimes uh, multimedia is very good to share on social media. So let me write some notes here. Uh, multimedia, which means pictures, sounds, audio, whatever, not just text. It's the 21st century. We can attach a picture, we can attach a video, a PowerPoint presentation and such to our tweets, to our, <coughs> to our social networks. and anything we do on one social network with some variation we can also do on every other social network Facebook um, to a degree they call it something else it has followers uh, Instagram has followers Pinterest has followers snapchat has followers they've all got followers they've all got following they've all got likes they've all got replies they've all got these things with different names sometimes so whatever you learn on one network you can apply it with some tweaking to the other networks so that's why when you say I've got to learn four networks well get good on one network and you'll see that what you're doing on that one network can be applied with some variation to the other networks I can share pictures and video on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and Snapchat etc.
But multimedia sharing is encouraged. When you share something, when you tweet something, if it's some sort of visual or multimedia sort of thing, that's going to give you more results than a plain old text tweet. Question. Two questions. I'm going ahead because I don't know. Sure. Uh, one, I attempted to go on Twitter a few months in my daughter, mm -hmm. and I got an immediate response, which is overwhelming. So, does that, do you have to keep responding every time people are responding to something you say? Can you just sort of say, I'll do this once a day for a few minutes? And otherwise, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's two questions there. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but I'll, I'll answer them. I'll answer them, no problem. Um, so what I mean is, um, for the first part of it, do you need to respond? The, the answer to that is yes. You do want to keep a dialogue going with the people that are interacting with you. That's the social in social media. Now, how often do you do it? That's up to you totally. You don't have to reply at that moment. You can wait and do it once a day, once a week, once a month. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, you should be replying with your followers and such. If they're reaching out to you and giving you kudos or asking questions and such, that's someone that's interested. That's way better than having your ad your billboard up on the up on the drive here and you don't know who's seeing it and you don't know who has a question or is thinking about hiring you but they they, they can't get out of their comfort zone if someone is interacting with you on any social media that's a potential lead so yes i would <coughs> interact with them how often it's totally up to you okay, because i know nothing about your other mm -hmm. so it will still be there so those comments when yes. Today, will they still be there later on tonight? And they still will be, yeah. We will see that we will have a nice handy screen that tells you everyone that's interacted with you, and you can always come back to it and, and follow up if you don't do it at that moment. Was that your last? Okay, sure. Next question here, then. I can ask you one more. Uh, yeah, one more, sure. My daughter got really excited. She said someone was certified. Huh. She wanted to what the heck is certified? probably meant uh, verified, uh, <laughs> which is this right here. You see this little blue dot here. Uh, when we create our account in a moment, we will see that uh, Twitter will let us create an account with just about any name we want, which means I can create a brand new account called Darth Vader. And it'll say, great, it'll let me create an account. I can go in and create a brand new account uh, called Bernie Sanders, and it will let me. But there's only one Bernie Sanders on Twitter, and it's verified. So. If you search, if I want to keep up with Justin Bieber, and I search on Twitter, I'm going to have 40 Justin Bieber accounts. But there's only one that will have the verified badge. That's the point of that. That's so that you know you're following the right account, the legitimate representative of that company. Because anyone can create any Twitter account with just about any name, and it looks exactly the same as um, you know, the city of San Diego. I can create a Twitter account right now for the city of San Diego. I'm not going to get that verified badge, so I'm not going to get followers. Because as we get savvier, we know that I want to follow verified accounts. The problem with that is not everyone is going to get verified, even if you're the legitimate business owner. Because honestly, the verification really is more for the big people, and we're the little people. So the big people are you know, news organizations, politicians, celebrities, nations. Companies, those are the big people on Twitter. They're going to get verified because spammers can create fake accounts and get followers and trick them and all of that. Us little people, who am I? I've had a family business for 30 years, but that's not big enough to probably get me verification. Um, so for us little people, we probably won't get verification. But that's what that means. That's the legitimate company behind that Twitter account. Another question over here? Uh so if we're setting up, uh, say, four or five different uh, of these accounts, would you want to have them be varied, or if you're selling product or product, would you want them to be all very similar, or would you do the same thing on each one? I wouldn't do the same thing on each one. Uh, part of the concepts of search engine optimization is that the search engines, so this is Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc., you know, they control our destinies so much online 
because in the old days I had a company and I wanted to get the word out to people, I'd get my name in the phone book. Nowadays, even though we don't want it anymore, we still get that phone book on our doorstep, right? So less and less people use the phone book. More and more people use Bing or Yahoo or Google or whatever search engine. So search engine optimization is very important. Now part of SEO is that the search engines don't want you to do duplicate content because that's what spammers do. A spammer can make five websites and put the same stuff on all five websites. A spammer can create ten Twitter accounts and put the same things on all ten Twitter accounts thinking that they'll get more traffic. The search engines are smarter than that. They will see they're scouring the internet all day long, 24 hours a day, and they'll see this tweet looks exactly the same as that tweet. This website homepage looks exactly the same as that website homepage. Mark them both as spam and they don't show up on search. So, the short answer is don't create five accounts with the same content because the search engine will mark you as a spammer. I don't believe you're a spammer, but the search engines won't. So, uh, if you are going to create different accounts, you should put different content. So now you've got double the work, triple the work. Mm -hmm. Question? Yeah, um, as far as the verification, um, so would you say that it kind of depends on like the large amount of followers over an extended period of time, so longevity, so the, those two factors that would no. eventually you no, know? unfortunately, no. Really, I have never met anyone in the real world that is verified. These really are people, big companies that are going to get scammed. Uh, you know, there's one legitimate White House. Uh, there's one legitimate San Diego City College. There's one legitimate, you know, organizations and people and politicians and newscasters and such. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter the length of your time here. They've been around since almost the beginning here. But we can look up local newscasters that have been that have started their Twitter account last year and they're verified and they've got 40 followers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter about the number of followers and the length of time you've been on Twitter. It depends who you are so that you don't get scammed and someone is not, um, you know, following the wrong account. But even the big people uh, have limitations. Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey, famous, um, famous comedian. If I go to his account, um, he, um, you know, he's verified. He's got 15 million followers there. Uh, but maybe I created my account uh, first or second past Jim Carrey. Uh, but this is. Uh, an entity that has existed and has this fame of the world, so verified. So honestly, for most of us, don't even worry about verification. We won't be able to do it, and if we get it, it's a miracle, but we're too little for, for Twitter. Yes? Well, I guess my question was, so Twitter, Twitter does the research and, ver and verification? Basically. Parameters? Basically, because when Twitter was smaller, you could go to twitter.com verified, this is the official verification system of Twitter. And in the old days, you could go here and you can reach out to them and try to get verified. They haven't updated this since 2012. So this is no longer a good avenue. It's too big. Twitter's too big. They now go through and try to verify accounts. You trying to request to get verified, it's not, it's not going to work. Yes? What is the appropriate Reading that one would use for his Twitter account. In other words, Jim Carrey obviously is, is a very famous person, but what would a normal, ordinary person use? Would they use a name or would they use some other name? I'll answer that question when we get to the point of creating the account. We'll, we'll have a <coughs> bigger discussion on that. So, this is one possible Twitter account. It's got tweets, it's got photos, it's got text. Um, let me show you another account here. <coughs> Twitter, let's go to twitter.com slash um, CNN, let's say. <coughs> the format of these accounts, you notice it's the, it's the address of Twitter slash then a name of the organization or the entity, twitter.com slash CNN. So here's CNN, they've got the branding at the top, they have a logo, they have bio, uh, then they have uh, their stats at the top. They've tweeted 80,000 times, and they have 23 million followers. Less tweets, more followers. Well, more people have heard of CNN than Mashable. How many of you have heard of Mashable before this class? Almost no one. So now that you've heard of Mashable, I do recommend that you visit the website Mashable.com. 
because I mentioned a textbook in the class, but the textbook goes out of date. Mashable.com is a great place for you to keep up with the latest of technology, social media, all of that stuff. News, Mashable. So I just showed you their Twitter account first. You might say, well, why would I go to their main website? I'll just follow them on Twitter. Because what they're posting on their website is pretty much what they're posting on Twitter. I just saw that on Twitter. So why don't I just follow them on Twitter and not ever visit their website? <coughs> on Twitter, you're limited to 140 characters. You're not going to get out that whole story, that whole very important story about creme eggs on Twitter. You're not going to be able to tell everyone about your article in 140 characters. Notice there is a link back to the Mashable website. So usually, so multimedia pictures and sound is encouraged because it catches people's attention. And then um, I would say uh, judiciously um, share links back to your website. Your website, let's say I'm a blogger. I have a lot of great ideas about politics, and everyone's got to hear them. So I've got a Twitter account, and I'm going to, I can't fit my whole rant in a tweet. I'm going to start off a little snippet of that rant, and then a link back to my website, where they can read the whole 500 words of that. Let's say I'm an artist. I have a, a, a Twitter account, and I tweet, and I mention, you know, a couple of sentences about my painting, and a little thumbnail, small-sized uh, copy of my picture and a link on the tweet because I can mix these up. I can put a picture and a link and a sound. So I put a picture, a little picture and a link back to my website where they go back to my website to see the full beautiful sized version of the painting and the button that says buy now. So adding links back to your website is also highly encouraged judiciously as in don't overdo it. You won't know what's overdoing it until we get into it, really. But don't make every single one of your tweets a buy now, buy now, look at this, buy this, donate now. Don't make every one of your tweets uh, a me, me, me kind of tweet. Uh, we're going to see about balancing the, the selling tweets with the fun tweets. You don't always have to be on message about please hire me, please buy this, please donate. You can simply share a, an uplifting uh, quote. Great. It doesn't have to then have the hard sell of click here to buy that poster of that quote, or click here to visit my website and subscribe. It can just be a quote. It can be a funny cat picture. It can be a sunset. It can be anything that is not the hard sell. So balance between the two. What's the balance in the ratio? We'll talk about it later, but it depends on your brand, your company. Yes? So, I'm always, do you still recommend just at least over the past one week for a short one? It actually shortens itself now. So, you yeah. So, the question there's a bit of advanced, but if our tweets are 140 characters and I've got a website that is the http colon slash slash the amazing victors blog.com, because amazing victors blog was taken, the amazing victors blog.com slash blog slash my rant number 20, 129. If that's the link to my item <coughs> online, that's a huge amount of text that's going to take up my, my tweet. Uh, and in the old days, we would use these link shortening websites that would take a big link and shorten it down to like six characters. One of the famous ones is bit.ly. bit.ly.com. No, no longer necessary. Twitter will automatically shorten it for you down to like 10 characters. So you don't need to do this extra step of shortening your links anymore. Twitter will do it for you. And it uses its own system. If you don't specify one, it will shorten it for you, and it'll give you an address that looks like gibberish, which is t.co slash gibberish. That doesn't matter what that is. Uh, for people, it'll show up properly, and if they <coughs> click it, it'll go to the right place. But Twitter shortens for you now. Question. So after, does it have to be like 
the space. So if you've gotten 139 characters so far, you add a tweet, you're going to have 140 uh, uh, you know, 150 characters, which is over your limit, and it won't let you tweet. So you have to think about the length of your, of your pictures and links as you're writing your stuff. So I would add the picture or the link first, then you know how much you have to work with, and then add your regular plain text. Yes? Can you tell me how to add your social media and really to get into your camera? Yeah. So I'll tell you about uh, free resources and such and how to do it all, definitely. Yes. So it shortens the link right in the post, or do you have to go to a different section? <laughs> Right in the right in the post, right in the tweet, it'll you'll you'll add it there, and it, it will automatically shorten it. Yes. For business related tweets, would you discourage using word shorthand like the letter U instead of word while you people will use the more social tweets? I'm going to say find your voice. It depends on your company. Um, if you are a CPA and I want you to do really good job on my taxes, and I see that on Twitter you're all about the U and the ATM and the BRB and all of that, and you're talking like my son, um, well, are you going to be, am I going to take you seriously as a CPA? Now, sometimes we have to do that because we have to get this message across we're running out of space, and then I do throw in a U rather than Y O U. That could be fine. So there's no right or wrong answer here, but think about your voice. If you are a daycare center, it'd be great that I'm using those short words and slang and cute words and such, because that's part of the voice of the company. If, if, if I'm a stoic uh, you know, financial organization, I'm probably not going to be tweeting like that. CNN doesn't, doesn't tweet those, that sorts of way because they're a bit more you know, professional. So find your voice. There's no wrong answer, but tweet the way you would try to communicate with someone in real life. So use TLAs as necessary. What's a TLA? Three-letter acronym. Any of these short names, any of these uh, contractions and such, uh, use them as necessary. If you need to shorten something because you're out of space, fine. Uh, but if you had the space to write the word out, write the word out. Yeah, it'll give us a countdown. As we're tweeting, it's going to be counting down, and then at a certain point when you go past the limit, it won't let you tweet. Um, let's look at, so we were looking also at CNN, and again, just a bunch of tweets, some video. There's also the brand new uh, popular um, animated GIFs, uh, which are short little graphics. This is not a video, technically, it's an animated it is an animated graphic, it's a GIF. Uh, so you see these more and more nowadays. You know, this video right here is a, more is a, um, is a one minute long video attached directly to the tweet. Uh, and then you've got, uh, you know, videos and such and graphics. And sometimes you have animated graphics. The animated graphics are very popular, but they're a little bit harder to create now uh, for, for us regular people. We have to go to some other website create the graphic there, import it into Twitter. GIFs are popular. Honestly, at the moment, they're a bit hard to work with for most of us, but it's something to think about. Question? There's an app called Pixar. It's so easy to use it Pixar? Isn't that the Disney company? No, Pixar. 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 Oh. Pixart. Pixart. Oh, okay. Pixart. Mobile photo editor and collage maker. That assumes that I've got my picture on my mobile device. What if I'm on my desktop computer here where I've got a nice 19-inch monitor and I want to tweet? So there's this seems valuable, definitely, and there's many ways to, to accomplish this. I'm just kind of thinking at many, many angles. Uh, but yeah, there's lots of ways to make graphics and such. This seems to be one. We've got at least one endorsement on it. You might want to check it out. Um, so everyone can have a Twitter account, big names, little names, companies, organizations, nations. Uh, I believe Twitter.com Japan is for Japan, the official government of Japan. They've got a Twitter. Updated eight hours ago. 
So notice you you see the same sort of thing, which is funny, they've only got 48,000 followers only, but um, they've got tweets. We'll be talking about hashtags, of course, because you see some of these things like hashtag made in Japan, what's that? We'll talk about hashtags, they've got pictures, um, all of that, we'll, we'll do this. But so you see everyone can have a Twitter account. It can be people, companies, nations, schools, super frivolous things. You can make a you can make a, a Twitter account for your pet cat, uh, and that happens all the time. There's a lot of famous cats on Twitter, online. I'll show you one, one more, then we'll actually do this because theory is good, but practice is better. PMD Interactive, Twitter.com/slash/PMDInteractive. That's our company there. Uh, so, notice the name. One was CNN, one was Japan, one was Mashable. This is PMD Interactive. The big commonality here in this address is that there are no spaces. You cannot have spaces on your Twitter name. Um, Twitter.com slash SDCE. That's the Twitter for this campus. San Diego Continuing Education, SDCE. Okay, there's also SWC underscore news. <coughs> no spaces, but you can use underscores. You cannot use dashes or dots or any other symbols. But if you need to spread the words out, because PMD Interactive <coughs> That's a little hard to read. It runs together. We could have created PMD underscore interactive. <coughs> but, you know, that, that's a special character there that you have to have people know. Some people don't know what's an underscore. They've probably seen them. They don't know it's called an underscore. You cannot use dashes. Southwestern College, which is where I also teach, their name here says Southwestern College. I thought I said I can't use spaces. Twitter has a little confusing thing here where you can have two names. This main username, Southwestern College, I'm sorry, not username, uh, full name, they call it. The full name is Southwestern College. That can have spaces, that can have symbols. Full name can have spaces, special characters, exclamation or uh, symbols and such. You can put an emoji in your full name. You can put the name of your company in a little picture of an apple, let's say. You can do that in the full name. <coughs> full name can have that stuff. And is not unique. Then we've got username. Can not have spaces, special characters, symbols. Only underscores. No dashes, no exclamation points, anything. The username can I have spaces, etc. Only underscores. And it's limited to <coughs> 15 characters. So if I've got a company, famous original Rays hot dogs, big name, it's not going to fit on my Twitter username. The Twitter username also is the at name because it's got the at symbol. The at symbol. Do you ever see on posters or on news broadcasts or movie previews. It says follow us on Twitter at Saw7, the movie. Um, that, under, that at symbol right there is unique, which means only one in the world can have it. I said the full name is not unique. 
I can go in right now and create a brand new account called Donald Trump. I can go in and create a brand new account called Hillary Clinton. It will let me. It will let me create a brand new account with a full name of whatever I want. That's why that verified badge is so important. I'm following the wrong politician in more ways than one. <laughs> and here, that at name, that's the unique one that only one in the world can have. And if someone has it, very hard for you to claim it back. Southwestern College would have loved to get simply at SWC. Someone claimed at SWC months or years or days or whatever before Southwestern College and therefore they had to settle for SWC underscore news. And even if an account has lain dormant <coughs> for years, here's the real quote-unquote SWC. They haven't tweeted anything since September 2014. Twitter is not going to give away, going, he's not going to take an account from one company to another, unfortunately. That's one of the things I really hope they fix. These accounts that, um, these accounts that uh, no one <coughs> uses, that someone created but no one uses, and I want it, good luck getting it. Twitter has a lot on its plate, I guess, and it doesn't do that, except for the big people except if you're a big famous account and Southwestern College is not famous enough not just because followers and such but um, it's not big enough to get that name so that's why I said earlier you you've just heard of Peach you don't care you should care you should claim that name so that someone doesn't take it so that someone doesn't take your name in case you want to use it later I'm not saying someone's gonna take it and then slander you it's a remote possibility. But I'm saying that if you decide to use it in the future, if Peach maybe does take off, like, hey, maybe that Pinterest thing will take off. It has. And if your name isn't on it with your name and you have to settle for another name, if I'm SWC on all my platforms except Pinterest and I settle for SWC News, you have to settle for that. And now people are going to accidentally go to the wrong account because your name is not consistent through social media. <coughs> Name is not exactly. So the username, the at name, that's the unique one. Okay. Only one in the world can have it. The username is not necessarily unique. Username is unique. Oh, one person know. in the world can have it. Full name is not unique. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, I know that the at symbol has always been there, but I'm just curious, do you know why? I mean, is it just to say this is specifically Twitter rather than like a Facebook username or, or any other username? Like, why is that at symbol? Like, I'm not exactly sure, but they, <laughs> they had to choose something to, to delineate it as as that. When we talk about Google Plus later, we will see that it's going to be with a plus <laughs> symbol. Uh -huh. So if I'm at PMD Interactive, it's basically plus PMD Interactive. Uh -huh. And not every network has some sort of symbol to delineate that it's on that network. Google Plus does, and Twitter does. Facebook really doesn't. It's just, you know, there's my name, and people assume it's on Facebook. And Instagram, um, yes and no, it doesn't exactly have it, but oftentimes people mention Instagram with the at name. So when they invented this in 2006, they said, well, we'll put that symbol, just like we've got a symbol on email. John at Smith.com. Just something that to delineates that it's a special <laughs> thing, not just a word. Not just a name. Yes. It's pretty different in that technically notice all of these companies are on the domain name Twitter. They're attached to the main domain name of Twitter and they're like a sub entity. They are like a you know, they are um, they are ancillary to Twitter. It's my content and my pictures and such, but I'm latching to Twitter's domain. I can have my own swcnews.com. There's no problem there. But to be on Twitter, I have to uh, adhere to these rules. And if the name is taken, the name is taken. So the...
our company. Again, all of these are very similar in that we will see there's a space for us to add a, 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 some kind of branding graphic, whatever we want. We saw what it looked like for CNN, Mashable, here's ours. A place for your logo, notice the logo is square. This is always a big issue for people. Uh, a lot of times people create a rectangular logo. Guess what happens when you put a rectangle inside of a square? <laughs> Cuts off. So if you've got a rectangular logo that says the Victor's Web Design, it's going to cut off the and web design, and it'll just say Victor. So you need to create a logo that is square. Uh, we're not going to talk about that in this class. That's out of our scope. But you need to figure out, if I've got a rectangular logo, you can resize your logo in Photoshop, for example, or other graphic software to pad it into a square. Again, I don't have time to talk about that in detail. You can ask during lab time and such. But most of these networks want a square logo. So, so many companies that should know better uh, don't. And off the top of my head, I don't think I can find... Yeah, here's one. <laughs> so, you need to make sure you've got a square logo. On the full name, you can add spaces and such, but notice the at name, we could not add a space, and we didn't want the underscore. We just wanted the words strung together. I've got capital letters there, and that's fine. It doesn't matter. If a person types this all lowercase, it'll still work. If a person types it all uppercase, it'll still work, or mixed case. Since you can't have spaces, one alternative is to, is to write your at name, your username, with capital letters mixed in, because that's more readable. Isn't that more readable than this string here? Mm -hmm. And it still works if someone typed it up here like this, because the company actually has an uppercase P and D and I. If someone typed that address, it'll still work. That does not matter, uppercase, lowercase. But for readability, if I put it on my business card, that's much more readable than just the all lowercase. Biography, we'll see about that. Again, we'll talk about hashtags. We'll see about adding uh, location that might be useful, especially if I've got a business on Main Street. I want to add a location so that people can actually get a map to come to my, to my, come to my shop on Main Street. We're going to add a web address back to our website because even with all of the social media, Even with every social media platform, you still want a website. Sometimes people come in and say, well, do I still need a website? I'm a superstar on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. I've got 10,000 followers on um, Twitter. Do I still need a website? Because if, if only those people gave me $1, I'd be raking in $10,000. You know that's not going to work. 1%. You still want a website because at your website <clears throat> at your website is where you complete your ultimate goal. And your ultimate goal is your ultimate goal. Whatever you're trying to accomplish online. I'm trying to sell houses. I'm a realtor. My ultimate goal of my website is for someone to visit my website and call me so that we can schedule an appointment for me to sell their house. That's the goal of my website. My ultimate goal is to get donations from my nonprofit organization to save the animals. And so I cannot get those donations through a tweet. I cannot sell that house through a tweet. I cannot sell that product directly through a tweet. Us little people can't do that. The big people can. <coughs> if you follow Amazon on Twitter, and they tweet about the latest product, and you reply to that tweet with buy, you bought it. You can buy things on Twitter if you're the big ones. Amazon, one of the biggest companies in the world. You can buy stuff via tweet on Twitter. I want to sell through Twitter, and I can't yet, because Twitter hasn't activated that for little companies. Over on Pinterest, I see a cool item on Pinterest, a cool product on Pinterest, and I can click Buy Now, if I'm Martha Stewart, if I'm Macy's, if I'm one of these big companies. 
later on, and they're opening up little by little, I'll be able to sell my product through Pinterest directly, eventually. Us little people can't do that yet, but we can do that in anything we want on our own website. So if we direct traffic back to our website, that's where we can ask for those donations, that's where we can sell that product, that's where we can show our high-quality paintings, because usually these networks lower the quality of your stuff so that it can transmit faster. You still want a website, most likely, because that's what you'll complete your goal. And I don't mean literally your website if you're selling products on eBay, if you're selling on Etsy, where, whatever, if you've got a Kickstarter, if you're trying to get donations and you've got Kickstarter, that's your website. That's where you complete your ultimate goal. You still want to drive traffic from your social media to your website judiciously because we don't want to make every single tweet about buy now, buy this, buy that, please follow, donate. You'll turn people off and you will lose followers. So there's our Twitter. Um, if you learn anything in this class, uh, the thing I want you to learn is to click the follow button on our account. <laughs> and we're tweeting about um, uh, you know, stuff related to, we created this video. Look at that. There's a video on how to use Peach. You just heard about it today. What is it? How do I use it? We made a video for you to watch. It's on our Twitter page there. We tweeted this funny thing about a 404 error not found. A 404 error page not found. And then computer for computer nerds, that's really funny. It's like saying, I can't find the thing that I can't find. And on and on. Inspirational stuff. Motivation Monday. So it's not always about look at us, look what we're doing, buy our stuff. We're putting in, we're putting in, like here, what's in a name? Do you need to have the perfect domain name? Search engines increasingly say no. So you don't have to have that domain name that is exactly the keywords of your company and all of that concepts we talk in detail about that in the SEO class. But we tweet about interesting things, useful things, funny things. What's your favorite snack while coding? It's not always about it's not always about the hard sell. It's about the social in social media. And I'm mentioning these different accounts also because this is inspiration. When we create the account and all of that, we have the option to follow accounts and to get followers. The more followers we have, the more potential customers we have. But it's also valuable to follow accounts, as we will see in detail later. Short answer is for inspiration. What am I going to tweet again this week? What am I going to tweet again today? I ran out of ideas. Follow other accounts related to your brand or company or market or whatever and see what they're tweeting and get inspiration for you to tweet something new. So we'll look at it in detail later, but just to make a note, your company Twitter account should follow other Twitter accounts. For inspiration, I'm not saying uh, follow them, um, just, just follow for no reason. I'm saying follow other accounts <laughs> to get inspiration about what they're writing about so that I can do something like it or better. I can get an idea and if I'm seeing my competitors, my realty competitors, a lot of them are tweeting about, you know, photos of the front and the back of the house. And I never thought about that. Okay, that seems to be popular for my competitors. I'm going to tweet some photos of the properties I'm selling, the front and the back and the sides of the house. You know, whatever, whatever idea you have. <coughs> We're going to create an account right now, and then we'll take our break. If you've already got an account, on the top right corner, there's a login. Everyone click on the top right corner. Log in. If you have an account, you can log in. If you don't, I'm going to go through the process of signing up. If you have an account, before you log in, think about this. Um, do you have an account on Twitter that you're focusing on business, or do you have one that is personal? Because you can create as many accounts as you want, and Twitter doesn't make any distinction between a personal account and a business account. When we get to Facebook, there is a difference. When we get to Google+, Plus, there's a difference. When we get to Pinterest, there's a difference. There's a personal Pinterest account and a business Pinterest account. 
on Twitter at the moment there's no difference. So if your Twitter name is the name of your self or your company, is it set up the best way that it should be? So in short, I'm sort of recommending, even if you've already got a Twitter account, I'm sort of recommending let's create a new one. You can delete it and, and forget all about it. I would recommend we all create a brand new one so that we see how the whole process, you might have missed something when you first created the account. So I'm going to go through this process of creating a new one. You can delete it later, and um, I think it'll I think it'll be better for us. Okay, that is the catch. You are going to need an email address for every different account. So honestly, make up that email. P put in a fake email, and it'll let you create the account. And then that's all we need. We, we need a we need a fake. A fake email, a fake account. I'm going to create one and I'm not even going to make a real Twitter account. It'll let me. You can change it later. I can change it later, I can delete it, it, it doesn't quite matter. <laughs> so I'm going to click at the top here, I need to sign up. I'm new to Twitter. Full name, phone number, or email, password. Full name again is any name with spaces and exclamation points and symbols and emojis and all of that. And right here, it's going to let me create this account. Check mark. It says, great, welcome to Twitter. Welcome to Twitter. It's going to let me create anything. It's going to let me create SDCE. It says, great, welcome. What's that? Well, this is what I'm saying. For If we're doing this as sort of like a test practice account, we can put anything we want here, and we can change it. Let's say I'm creating a Twitter account for my business. I would put here, Victor's Bakery. I would put the name of my business, or I could put my name or whatever I want here. So that goes back earlier to your question. What should I put here? This full name literally says full name, but it's also the name of your business. If I have this business, Victor's Bakery, that's my full name on Twitter, Victor's Bakery. At what point does it you on the next screen. This is the full name, and on the next screen it'll ask us to choose a username. The username is the one that is unique, that only one person can have. So the full name, I should have put my personal name instead of my nope. business? Nope. No. Once again, okay. once again, this is the name either of your you as a person or you as a business. Just because it's full name, it, that's why there's no distinction between business and personal. They should make a distinction. But this is the name of your business. Okay. Phone number or email. Again, here's my email. Sure. Fine. I don't have to have a real email because this account, again, I'm creating this account right now to teach you this. It doesn't matter. I'm never going to log into it again. I can delete it. I'll show you how to delete it. You can put in a real email address. It doesn't matter. If you're doing this legitimately for your business, fill it in properly. But if you're doing it just to learn this, make it up. And then later on, do it for real. Question? Can you change your? Um, I know the app. Uh, the app name mm -hmm. is. Um, you can't change it, but can you change your username? You can change both, actually. You can change your app name. It's it's kind of hidden in one of the settings screens, and I'll show where it's at. But you can't change any of these. Because okay. I can realize now looking at mine, we've done that. We'll fix it. Okay. Notice I have a limit here. The Victor's Bakery in San Diego. I ran out of space. I can't put in San Diego. So you have a limit. I dealt with a client. She is uh, Elsa, Val Elsa Valencia Jewelry Designs. That did not fit. So we have to do EV Jewelry Designs. I forgot what we did. But you have a limit to the full name, the company name. You also have a limit to the at name, which we'll see in the next screen. Password. Make up a password here, use your favorite password, whatever. We are creating a password to log into Twitter with this. This is not asking you for your password for your email account. This is asking you to create a password for Twitter. In the old days of the internet, there was very little advertising. In the old days of social media, there was very little, if no, advertising. As these companies have gotten so big and part of our lives, they've realized, we should make money off of this. 
So most of these social networks have some form of advertising, which is how they make money. You see advertising all over Facebook, you see advertising on Twitter, you see advertising on Pinterest, it's advertising on all the social networks. You can't really get away from it. And so, there's an option here. Tailor Twitter based on my recent website visits. Show me stuff on Twitter that I might care about based on my website visits. So that means it's going to put a cookie on your computer, which is a little tracking code, and I know it sounds scary, but Twitter uh, cookies have been around since day one of the internet. But a cookie is just going to be a little piece of code that follows you when you go from this website to that website to this website. And if you c frequent a lot of technology websites, Twitter will try to show you content based on technology stuff, stuff that I would care about. If you don't want Twitter to keep track of that, you turn it off. But that does not mean you will not see advertising on Twitter. There's no way to get away, uh, away from advertising. It simply says, Twitter, don't pay attention to what I'm doing online. It'll still show you generic ads and stuff. So all of the networks, all of the websites. When you Have you ever noticed this, that you go on Amazon, you look at some cool stuff on Amazon, you go into Facebook, and now it's showing you ads about that thing you just saw. Well, that's the modern web. It tracks you. And I know it sounds insidious and all of that, and it is annoying, and I don't like it. A lot of people don't like it, but this is still the Wild West. The online world, what's over the top, what's privacy. Some people don't know, don't care about privacy online. A lot of people do. A lot of people do care that they're being tracked. Uh, is my phone secure? Is it following me online? The default at the moment, unfortunately, of a lot of the internet is there's very little privacy. We expect a lot of privacy in the real world, but a lot of us, without thinking or caring, give away a lot of our privacy online. It is very unfortunate personally. And so here, you can choose for it to track you or not. It doesn't diminish your Twitter experience if you say no. But if you leave it on, it will give you suggestions and content that might actually be useful for you as a business online. Again, for that inspiration, what am I going to tweet again today? Because ideally, you should be tweeting every day. That's a very high bar, so we'll have another bar to talk about. But you should be tweeting often. Now you're going to get writer's block. What else am I going to tweet again? Inspiration might help. Click sign up. Add a phone number. Uh, this is uh, to verify, not to verify, but to prevent as much as possible spam. If anyone can create any Twitter account, that means any spammer can create a Twitter account. This is a way to help weed out the legitimate people. Some of you may not see this screen, and some of you may see it. What always happens when I teach this is that we have 30 people in one room trying to create a Twitter account. Twitter sees that and says, is this a spam farm? Because suddenly 30 accounts are being created in one room in San Diego. And so it might be overprotective for some of you and might ask you for a phone number, and some of you it might not because you got in in time. Uh, but here, I am going to put my phone number because it's going to send me, I think it's going to send me a text message to confirm I'm a real person, not a spammer. What's that? An SMS is a text message. AT&T might charge you for text messages. Oh, if I'm doing it from my phone. Yes. So this is not that Twitter is charging us, it's that AT&T or Verizon or T-Mobile or whatever might charge you for text messages. If we're going to delete this at the end, can we put in a fake phone number now? Hmm, good question. Let me put in a fake phone number right now and see what happens. No. Um, I guess... Okay, everyone, let's uh, pay attention. Please remember, if you're talking to each other, please at a lower level. Um, I guess it is asking for uh, a phone number that is legitimate to confirm it, so... We remember later on today we're going to delete this account. So if it's fake, I am going to put my real number, but later on I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to, I am going to put a real phone number.
again, this might seem intrusive, but the point of this is to help weed out the spammers. There are so many companies out there that make money off of scamming people, and so this is one possible way to help prevent that. I put in my number, I got a text message with a code, and it confirmed it uh, here, and again later on I can delete this. So uh, if you don't want to do this, that's fine. You can not do this, just follow along. Do this at home. Remember, I'm recording all of this. You can do this at home at your leisure at the privacy of your own computer. These computers also have a software called Deep Freeze. On the bottom right corner, you'll see a little polar bear looking at you. That polar bear there, it means that you've got Deep Freeze on this computer, which means anything you do to our computers will erase when you restart them. So I logged in with my phone number. That doesn't mean we're keeping a copy of your phone number on our computer. As soon as you restart the computer, it goes away. But again, if you don't want to do this in this class, you can do it at home. Watch the video. We're going to do a break in a moment. We're going to do a break in a moment, so uh, we'll check that out. But I believe, yes, it does need a cell phone number to send you a text message. Yes. So it asked us for username on the first screen, and it's asking for username again. That was not a username. That was a full name. Oh, that was a full name. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> so here now we've got the username. This is the unique one. No spaces, no special characters, except underscores. And for me, it's giving me some suggestions, or I can type my own, of course. I can do Victor underscore bakery. Or I can do bakery Victor. Or I can do gibberish. Do not select skip, or it'll give you some weird generic Twitter name. You don't want that. This is the place where you want to put your at name, your Twitter name, uh, that is unique to you. And so I want Victor's Bakery, which will not work because I cannot use spaces and apostrophes and any symbols. Okay, I'll take out that apostrophe and I'll take out that space. Oops, username is taken. Someone beat me to it. Okay, I'll do the... Victor's Bakery. I'm out of space. I can't fit the E there. I'm out of space. But TH Victor's Bakery fits. It's not exactly what I want, so this can be changed later. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I think I can do underscore Victor Bakery. Yeah, that'll work. And again, here you can do upper cases or lower cases. That's fine. Um, this name can be changed. This is the name I'm going to go for at the moment. Click Next. <coughs> you're going to get a little intro here. We're glad you're here. Twitter is a constantly updating stream of the coolest, most important, blah, 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 tailored for you. Tell us what the stuff you love. OK, so everyone's on Twitter. Celebrities, cities, news organizations, companies. You're on Twitter now. And in order to use Twitter effectively, you want to get followers, yes, of course, but you also want to follow some accounts, which are for inspiration. On this next screen here, if I click Let's Go, it says, why not follow these accounts? Why not follow popular accounts? Why not follow news accounts or government accounts? It'll tell you exactly which, of the, which accounts it means in a moment. It'll tell you which it means in a moment, but here, perhaps, pick a topic or two. Honestly, I don't recommend the popular accounts. This is going to recommend for you to follow Justin Bieber and Lady Gaga and Kim Kardashian. Who cares? I want to follow stuff related to my nonprofit organization. I want to stuff related, follow related to, to entertainment or news or music or something. I can change this, of course, but I'm going to select Lifestyle. I, I want to get suggestions of accounts on Twitter to follow of the topic Lifestyle. And so you can select as many of those as you want, and it'll, it'll have you confirm on the next screen. I'll click Continue, and it's suggesting to me, why not follow NBC7 San Diego? 
uh, it must know that I'm in San Diego because that's one of the many things that's tracked <laughs> online, your general location. It might be useful for me to follow the local news. I've got here the Chargers, Taylor Swift, uh, Kim Kardashian, Elon Musk. It's suggesting follow all of these accounts so that you see valuable things on Twitter. I would recommend to click the button that says select all and say not follow any of them and then go in and follow the ones that's, that really might apply to you. I'm going to turn select all off. So yeah, I'll follow NBC News, I want to keep up to date with local events, uh, Kat Cora, the first female Iron Chef, yes, my, my business is Victor's Bakery. I want to keep up to date with, you know, food-related things. What else? Fitness Magazine, sure, that applies. Uh, again, you can follow as many of these as you want, whatever applies to you, Martha Stewart Living, um, Padres, sure. Somehow it does know that you're connected, perhaps probably your email address. If you put in your real email address, it knows then that you've got a connection to someone else. So it might suggest it. You can follow or not. So um, I'll just select five. It suggested 40, but I'll select five. You do want to select some amount because if you don't, it, it'll Twitter. Twitter will feel like a ghost town. Like this is this is it. I don't see anything here. People love Twitter. I don't, I don't see anything. No, because you're not following anyone. You're not going to see anything if you're not following anyone on Twitter. And so I'll select five and I'll click follow five. Do you does, have to save or it, once you, once it's blue, it's done. Yes. Yes. Once it says save, you can click save. I don't get your question. What's your question? Okay. Once you once you click follow, I think I'm going to be on the screen because I already have the account set up. So yeah, just stay at that point. Okay. That's right. If I have followed a few accounts and I don't really like what they're tweeting about, I can unfollow and we'll see how to do that. Eventually, you get to a point here that says add your photo, uh, and you do want to add your company photo as soon as you can. Now, again, a lot of the stuff that we see here feels like, does it want my photo? Does it want my name? It should make a better distinction about a personal and a business. Everything that it's asking you here, think about it as, it's, as if it's asking you about your company. So it's not my photo, it's my company photo, my logo. I don't have my logo with me today. I'm not on my computer. But I do want to add my company photo as soon as possible. Because if you don't, you're going to get the generic egg icon. You haven't hatched on Twitter yet. You're going to get the little egg icon. And then you're not going to seem legitimate on Twitter. Because every brand new spam account has an egg, account, an egg icon. You're not a spammer. You're a real company that wants to get real followers to make real sales. One way that you will entice people is to have a real photo on your Twitter account, on your Pinterest, on your Facebook, on all the networks. If you still have the generic icon, that's one of the reasons that, it's, that you're being held back from getting followers. Who wants to follow a spam account? Now, I know you're not a spam account, but when someone sees your account and it's got the generic icon, you're a spam account. I don't have my picture. Remember, you need a square picture. So at home, I'll add my picture. One of the first things I want to do As soon as possible, add your branding, which is your logo, which is, I believe they call it the cover image. Remember that image that's big and bold and interesting looking at the top of your Twitter account? That's your cover image. You want to add one of those. You want to add a biography and you want to add a website and we'll see where to do that of course but as soon as possible you want to add all of that to be a legitimate Twitter account yes Fiverr um, I haven't used it in a long long time but it is getting better and better and you just really need to look at people's reviews so what we're talking about here is a website called Fiverr Fiverr, I think it's got two or three E's, R's. 
<laughs> two. Let's say two. Two Mars. Yeah. Fiverr.com is a website where people sell their services for five dollars a pop. You need a logo? Go find someone on Fiverr that will design a logo for five dollars. Now you get what you pay for. So five dollars might not be the most amazing logo, but many times now because this service has been evolving, it's been around like ten years or so, people can review people. I paid five dollars, I got a terrible logo. One star. So just like Yelp, is that restaurant good? I'm going to look them up on Yelp. Two stars? Never mind. Five stars? I'm there. <coughs> Five stars? I'm there. Fiverr is like that too. People create stuff for $5 a shot on Fiverr. Anyone can do it, which means good people and bad people can do it. Check the reviews, and that'll help you decide if it's worth it or not. Because I don't have artistic ability, but I need a logo. I could possibly get one here. Fiverr for affordable design. People do a bunch of stuff here. For $5, I'll write a song for your girlfriend. For $5, I'll write your name on my arm and post it online. <laughs> um, yeah, that person's got 5,000 followers, so suddenly my company's reached 5,000 people for $5. People do lots of interesting things there. So we'll do this. We'll do this number one step in a moment. I can't put my logo, so I will, at the top right, click Skip. Find people you know. This is optional. This is if you select to connect your Twitter, uh, your Twitter account with your Gmail, Twitter will scan your address book, because you've told it it can. You're gonna, it's going to scan your Gmail and say, this person is on Twitter and that person is on Twitter that you know. Why not follow them? You can connect your AOL, your Outlook, Gmail, etc. That may or may not be valuable for you. And usually I don't recommend it, not for privacy or anything like that, but, not, but because are you really going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? Are your friends and family going to care again that you're, put, that you're selling another thing? They've already bought one uh, as a courtesy. Are they going to buy another one? Are they going to follow you on Twitter and buy your stuff or hire you as a realtor? So I don't think that some of my colleagues in my own company um, disagree with me, but they're not here to defend themselves. I don't really recommend to do the connect with friends and family thing. You're not going to build your business on top of your friends and family. You're going to find brand new customers, as we'll see how in this class. So that I don't, I don't bother with. If you want to, go for it. I'm going to skip it. If you don't do it now, you can do it later. But I'm going to skip it. Yes? When we go back to the screen of our settings to add them, that's where we can also remove them. We'll see that soon. It's recommending some more follows. I'll say no. The first five that I followed is fine. If I want more, it might have given me more suggestions. Great, but I'm just going to proceed. I'm going to turn them all off and then click um, Continue. So what I've got here is my brand new Twitter account. We'll be talking about, of course, uh, how it all works in just a moment. We're, at, we're on track for a break, uh, but uh, I've created the account, and we'll take a break at this point to make sure everyone's on track, either created the account or logged in. I'll turn the printer back on in a moment if you'd like a copy of the syllabus. It's 11.07. We'll be back at 11. 17, and then we'll learn some more Twitter. <laughs>